All right, Fantex has a new case. This one's the NV7. Isn't this like a Mass Effect kind of a, is there like an NV7 in Mass Effect or something like that? N7. Oh. EK Waterblocks is a premier leader when it comes to all things water cooling. Their lineup includes fittings, tubing, tools, radiators, fans, pumps, coolants, and of course, water blocks. The Vector 2 Series GPU blocks utilize a 10 millimeter thick copper cold plate and a 3D machined acrylic jet insert for improved flow distribution and thermal performance. Every Vector 2 water block includes a high grade aluminum back plate that encloses the entire GPU with its distinctive L-shaped profile for increased rigidity and cooling surface area. And right now, EK Waterblocks has discounted all NVIDIA 30 Series GPU blocks at 50% off making this the best time to finally upgrade the cooling of your 30 series GPU. But don't wait, this deal is only valid while supplies last. To learn more, follow the sponsored link in the description below. It's been a while since we've taken a look at a Fantex case, uh, but this is kind of unique in the sense that I feel like they sort of taken a lot of features that are popular with various manufacturers and sort of made one case that kind of incorporates all of them. So that should make this realistically kind of like the ultimate case. The irony too is like this box is pretty big, but they call it a mid tower. But we all know Fantex makes some pretty big cases like the Elite, even uh, Phil's old case. Boiter PC how the game in a mid tour. We're gonna unbox this today. We're gonna talk about some of the new fans too, because these fans are also, I believe there's some present in here. I could be wrong, but the Fantex D3120 fans, which are pretty unique because they also feature the both standard and reverse airflow. Reverse airflow fans are kind of becoming a thing lately. And they're pretty neat because of the fact that it allows you to have the airflow be the direction you want them to be, but the, the fans all look the same even though they'll blow different directions. The downside with that is if you find yourself with uh, too many of one or not enough of another, they can only be used in a particular spot correctly, if that makes sense. So in terms of packing, double ball, double balled? Yeah, double balls, baby. Double walled cardboard on the outside, which is nice and thick, it's just thick. And then the uh, closed cell foam here with cardboard in between. And then of course we've got this kind of a fabric. All right. Yeah, I mean, they call this a mid tower case, but let's be real. This is pretty close to a full tower. Although I'm not entirely sure these days what constitutes a mid tower versus, versus a full tower. Are you ready? That happens every time. <laughs> this is if like the Lee and Lee Dynamic 011 and the Corsair 5000D had a baby and then maybe had an affair with like a new N7. No wait, H7. It kind of incorporates a lot of features you'll find in different cases. Uh, oh, and then maybe with like a little, maybe a side fling with a, with a height Y60. <laughs> so there's a lot of things happening with this case, which I, which I like. Yeah, and with this back cover here, it maybe had a one night stand with like a 925 from Inwin. <laughs> so this really is like a mosh pit of case design. So here you go. From the business end, you can see We've got a full tempered glass side panel here and also in the front. Now, when you take these off, and this is taped right here, so I'm assuming these are just gonna be like pressure ball fitted in there, pressure balls. Pressure balls are common these days in computer cases. Everything is so smooth, I have nothing to grab onto. <laughs> like, the, look at the tolerances between the panels here. Like, I'm not sure where I'm supposed to grab, but I gotta grab it somewhere. We'll be back. So to gain access, you swing open the back door. <laughs> Does this come out? Okay, so this is captive with screws right there. I thought maybe that this would just lift out, but it doesn't. Anyway, that will then get you access to this thumb screw right here, and this thumb screw right here. And this is what we heard rolling around in there. It's just the screws in there. It's kind of normal, because they give you a ton of extra screws. Check this out. Look at all this wiring, these wiring clips that you get right there. So that's to like clip all your USBs and stuff down. You actually have, and I know I'm kind of jumping around here, but you actually have two 120 millimeter rear exhaust fans instead of one. You could even put a 240 rad right here if the rad's a slim rad and it'll fit in there. So that's kind of unique. So in terms of mesh material, it's gonna be a little obstructive. So you're gonna keep that in mind. I would have liked this to have been larger mesh, just to allow a little bit more airflow. Uh, but that's some pretty fine mesh. So the fact that there's a lot of fans in here are gonna be needed to overcome the amount of restriction that's in this mesh material. But part of the reason for that is the fact that the fine mesh is also working as the filter itself. 
So it's kind of doing double duty. A lot of times case manufacturers will put op big openings and then really restrictive filters on one end. The difference is you can remove those filters to increase the airflow if you want to have the trade-off of more dust intrusion. In this case, it's just the mesh material. So we got to keep that in mind. That's probably only about two millimeters of opening there. Um, maybe even millimeter and a half. They're pretty small. Oh, it goes back, not up. Thick. So screw. Looks like it's probably just a 632nd. Yeah, check that out. So all this room for activities. I think you could technically, if you wanted to, even just leave the glass off and have this be like an open air chassis. Although it does lose a little bit of structural rigidity when you do that look. It has some twists to it. So probably not a huge deal. You could use this as an open air test bench, kind of like this if you wanted. Um, but yeah, there's a little bit of twist in there when you do that. So getting the back panel off as we continue our tear down, we need a screwdriver to get into the back panel. Unfortunately, that means it's not toolless. There's one screw on the top right there. It's a tapered head. Once that screw is off, this should lift up or something like that. Dust filter on the bottom. It comes out the rear, by the way. So if you have this anywhere near a wall or something, which you shouldn't, this is actually the ventilation for the power supply. Power supply is up top. You need room right here for airflow for that, but you need enough clearance to pull that out, which is a little bit less than the width of the case. So you need, I need at least 10 inches of clearance between the wall and the case to pull out the filter if you're gonna run the filter at all. The reason why I mentioned that is the bottom, we'll show you in a second, has a massive opening that you would be able to pull in uh, air from the bottom through rad radiators, fans, etc. So once that slides up, there's the one screw hole in the top I was saying that you need to tear it down. Again, the same fine mesh material that we were used to seeing uh, on the other panels. The difference is no filter behind those because those work as the filter. Pretty high flow filters actually. I always do like a little bit of a breath test. Like if you can just blow a little bit and feel the air, then it's a pretty high flow filter. So this is the filter intaking the bottom, but look at the size of the openings on the bottom. Check that out. That is pretty high flow. So this is the kind of mesh I would have personally liked to have seen on the body panels, um, just for higher airflow. But as you can see, uh, very high flow, which is why they put the filters on there. Now those would be intake fans. You'd be intaking from the bottom. Look at the amount of height that we have right here. It is at an angle, at a 40, not a 45, but it is a, an angle there, as you can see. But the angle is allowing it to pull air from the back side of the chassis so you have kind of a closer gap in the front. It will still pull air through there, but it will pull more air from this backside into these fans up through the chassis and then exhausted out the top. This is where your power supply goes. You've got some pre-run cables in here for uh, USB 3.0, USB-C, front panel connectors, high audio or high definition audio. We've got a little control board right there, which is more than likely for our ARGB. You can see right here, it's got an ARGB distribution block already built in which is using standard JST connectors. So you might need to get an adapter to a JST plug if you're using a non-Fantex branded ARGB device. Fortunately, uh, Fantex uses the JST connector, which is an easy termination to find to go from the, the three pin, you know, the pokey pins into like a motherboard into a JST plug. Those are easy to find. So you'd be able to plug that in and that now would be controlled off of your case lighting effects. And then the buttons for those are actually right here for changing modes and fan speeds and all that sort of stuff. We've got some thumb screws here for panels. So this right here can be used for putting a solid state drive on there, like a SATA drive, or installing a control box for something. So a lot of control boxes for fans and ARGB and stuff now are the same size as two and a half inch SSDs in terms of its footprint. They're usually a lot thicker though, because People know that not a lot of people are running the SATA SSDs these days. A lot of people have moved on to M.2. So you'd have at least one free spot to be able to put those controllers and have it be nice and tidy. Um, has some cable tie downs right here, as you can see. That's pretty easy to access. And then you have multiple drive um, hole options right here for three and a half inch drives, two and a half inch drives, or other control boxes that you can mount to the inside of that right here. 
And then as you can see, you have access to your, your motherboard and stuff. Now the motherboard gets mounted really low in this chassis. These are for getting your connections to the lower part of your motherboard, whether they be ARGT, ARGT, ARGB connectors, fan connectors, high definition audio, USB 2 plugs, maybe your USB 3 is on the bottom of your motherboard, it's common, fan headers, all sorts of stuff need to access the bottom of the motherboard. So those just come out right here. So there you go. As you can see, you have this rad mount right here, which will support up to 360, 480, because you can fit three 140s on here. Um, you can see you have multiple mounting rail options. That's not just for the larger fan size. It's also so you can offset to get it farther away from the motherboard if necessary. Depending on your graphics card that's in here, depending on your heatsink array and stuff, you might need to space it away from the motherboard to have room from having an impact on anything. But you can fit a pretty large rad here. On the top though, you're stuck with 120 millimeter fan sizes up to 360 mils as you can see. So you can fit one, two, three of those, 120 only up top. So you need to keep that in mind if you're doing a rad. Your bigger rad would go on the bottom, smaller rad would go on the top. And then as I mentioned right here, check this out, you can fit two exhaust fans, which also means a 240 rad right here. And it's not just because of the fact that it can fit two fans, it can fit a 240, they actually specifically call it out. Because having room for fans does not mean it can fit a radiator. How much room is there to clear where the RAM mount is? And this right here, or not the RAM, but the fan mount right here, and then this side piece. If it were real snug, radiators tend to be a little wider than the fans, then it would impact and it wouldn't fit. Take your work and gaming experience to the next level with the ViewSonic XG340C 2K Ultra Wide High End Display. The XG340C 2K 34 inch 100 Hz Ultra Wide Monitor features HDMI 2.1, AMD FreeSync Premium Pro, 1000R curved screen, VESA display HDR400 and one millisecond response time for the ultimate immersive gaming experience. And take control of multiple devices with KVM support while also taking full control of your display via the Elite Display Controller. To see the full list of specs and features, follow the sponsored link in the description below. So this is the part that like putting fans on the motherboard tray has become really popular with modern case fans or case manufacturers. Um, that is something that now a lot of people are doing. So as you see, um, you could have air intaking right there too. I personally feel like that's not necessary with this design because you have so much intake on the bottom. It would be, I mean, any fan movement overpowers the power of convection, convection force is very weak, but heat naturally wants to rise. So having intake on the bottom, which has all this free flowing intake right here without the super fine de density mesh would free flow a lot of air up past your graphics card, up towards the top of the case, and then you can exhaust it here. It's just the top has that fine mesh, so it's gonna be slowed down a little bit, which means that you probably wanna have some fans back here, which are also gonna be slowed down a little bit by the fine mesh in the back. You technically don't have to have the mesh in there at all. So the reason why you would have this is I guess just to protect it from any of the cables that are kind of getting smooshed in here from maybe making its way into the fan, but you could take that off for uh, a little bit more airflow. In terms of the thickness, down with the thickness, it looks like you could technically mount the fan on the outside. So it looks like there's enough room there. 25 mils is standard. Oh. Did I mention it's made out of stamped steel? So because of the fact that uh, it looks like we have enough room for a 25 mil thick, I'm gonna go get a fan real quick. I'll just unbox one of these and see if these will fit. Are these 25 mil or 30 mil? These are 30, so they may not. <laughs> I just wanna check with the 30 mil first of all. So this is actually one of their 30 mil reverse flow fans. So as you can see, we have ARGB lighting on the side. This is their D30 fan, by the way. But check out the fan blades. One, this would be nuts for static pressure because they are so aggressive. But two, normally the fan blades are pushing the, the airflow out the cage side. So reverse flow just means it's pulling in through the cage and exhausting that way. So that way, if these are on the bottom, that's a lot prettier to look at than that, which is how a normal fan would look. So I just wanted to point that out. There is no way a 30 mil fan is gonna fit in this. Nope, not even close. So it's just a regular old 25 mil fan from another brand. Um, yeah, so you absolutely could mount a 25 mil fan on the outside, two of them, and then have the rad on the inside if you wanted, or it would allow for push-pull if you had 
interference with your motherboard. Because that's the other thing too, is you gotta make sure this isn't gonna impact anything on your motherboard on the bottom side, because if it has really tall heat sinks, which I doubt any would be that tall, you could mount that there. So that's kind of neat. Okay, so to access this cage, there's a thumb screw on the top, right here. And then you can mount your fans and your rad to this. They all have to go on this side though, because we've already showed this is right up against the rear of the chassis. And then we're ready to put this in. You just line up these two tabs with the two slots right on the bottom of the bracket, just like that. Put in the thumb screw and then your rad and everything would be in there. And that's why having that front panel off is nice because you have all this access right here. So if you need to wire up your fans and stuff, there's some grommets down there even. There's a wire channel right here, as you can see. This is where all the front panel connectors are going through. So your fan, your fan wires can go right through there. In terms of cable management, you got these uh, plastic um, tie downs right here with Velcro over them and several, there's three channels total each. So you got a lot of options for tie downs. You do have to have uh, some SATA cables, SATA power cables in your system, obviously, just for what's on the case itself, included on the case. Cause as you can see right there, they require two SATA power cables to operate both the front panel deal and then the uh, ARGB divider. The one thing this case does not have, which I feel like would make it sort of the ultimate case would be a built-in fan controller. Having a fan controller, would have made this kind of like the one-stop premium, everything you could possibly need in one chassis. Plenty of room to be able to fit the largest GPUs, like a, a, a 4090 Strix can fit in here with plenty of room to spare, which is why it's so funny that it's called a mid-tower case because it really is like a full tower at that point. It's even got a fill port at the top right here. Um, so if you're doing water cooling, this is, you could get this going right to a reservoir or whatever, a nice big tube res right here, or even one of those uh, distro block type reses with the pump built in would go perfect right there. This would be an amazing water cooling case too. So open, which is what makes uh, water cooling nice and easy to work with, especially when you have this much room right here to be able to put reservoirs and stuff. Rad, rad, fans, fans, block, block, be beautiful build. It's one of those things where if it just had the fan controller built in, that would have been awesome. But you know what? Can't have everything you want, but if you guys want this case, you guys can check it out down in the description below. Same thing with their D30 fans. Like I've already showed you the reverse airflow. These are actually daisy chainable. You can see the connection, the connection points right there. Um, so it even tells you that's the input, that can be an output. These basically snap together and then they have a connector that goes in between them. Daisy chain is the most amazing thing now when it comes to wire cleanliness. So nice to see that. The 30 mil fans definitely create a ton more static pressure and a ton more airflow. The downside is they take up a bit more space. You'd be surprised how much five millimeters actually matters when it comes to, uh, especially smaller cases. Um, as you can see, like I showed you, it wouldn't fit in the back, but a 25 mil fan would. So you would just have to put them on that side. Although that would be intaking. So you'd need the standard direction fan, not the reverse fan. Anyway, there you go. There's our unboxing and first look at the new NV7 from Fantex. You guys can check it out down in the description below. Why do I feel like everyone's kind of following that 579 sort of a naming scheme now? It's like ever since the CPU started doing that, it's like everyone's doing that now. I guess it makes sense. Small, medium, large, right? Why don't we just start calling them tall, grande, vente? Thanks for watching. I really want to do a build in this. Nick's been kind of needing, wanting a new computer over there. He doesn't need it, but you know, we're a computer building channel. I kind of want to build a new rig in this, which would be perfect for that, but he's sort of bugging me for the Gundam build stuff. But to do that, he would have to go backwards in generation. I think we're, I think we're gonna build in this. This will be fun. But I've got other builds I gotta catch up on. All right, guys, thanks. We'll see you in the next one.